Welcome to CTC Church for our virtual sermons. Join us as Dr. David Sagadevan delivers his message titled Daniel, a man of God, part 14, Prophecy of the End of Time. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel as well as like and share this message. Okay, when part 14, last week was part 13, spoke about wars on the earth. There's always been wars. And there's still wars right now. So let's just pray for peace. Everybody say peace. But as you know, the Prince of Peace has to be here before the peace is established. Now, the last part today is called prophecy. Everybody say that prophecy. Prophecy of the end of time. You see this watch you got, maybe you got one in your hand or wherever you keep it. Uh, there's coming a time in the near future where time will be over. Where we won't have time. There won't be no time. Because we'll be in eternity. You know, you ask people, where will you spend eternity? Eternity cannot be spent. Something you spend gets finished. Eternity won't get finished. It's there. And it will always be there. The, the truth of the matter is, where will you be in eternity? Either heaven or hell. First we'll go through the millennium and be here on the earth for a thousand years with Jesus. We're going to be here with Jesus for one thousand years. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at the time, Michael shall stand up. The great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. Now the angel is talking to Daniel and telling him these things. And there shall be a time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation. Wow. Wow. Even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone was found written in the book. Now let's stop there for a moment. Written in the book is referring to the book of life. I know you got a book of life or you have an ID card that registers you here on earth. But you register in heaven. Is the book of life. That's why when you ask Jesus into your heart, you say, Lord, let my name be recorded in the book of life. Write my name in the book of life. So everyone that's found written in the book of life, they will be delivered. All right? From the power of Satan and power of Antichrist at that time. Michael is the archangel. This main task, his main task is to watch over the nation of Israel. God is not finished with the nation of Israel yet. Uh, he owes them some time. Because Daniel's prophecy said 70 weeks are determined on your people. Remember that? And we calculated from what the Bible scholars give us. And it says 69 weeks is what they got. Israel is recognized as a nation, operating as a nation, when the temple is operating in Jerusalem. Temple with the sacrifice that they make in the temple. All right? And so, right now, it's not operating. That's why it's the time of the Gentiles. Everybody say, time of the Gentiles. So, the angel tells Daniel, there's going to be a time of trouble like you've never seen before. I think some of the things we see now is we've never seen that before. 
Isn't that in the world today? Lots of things we see we haven't seen before. Uh, the angel is talking about the times of trouble is the, the second part of that seven years that God owes to the nation of Israel. So the last three and a half years is going to be tribulation like nobody has ever seen on the earth. Now we see tribulation. Uh, in some places we see it getting bad. But it's really going to get bad during that time of tribulation. Now, listen and, and just pay attention carefully because I'm going to explain to you some things that you need to understand as a believer. Say, I understand what the Holy Spirit is saying to me. All right. So, in Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, it says, And many who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now we need to understand that. Uh, there's a link up with your body and the earth. That's why when you die, I recommend you be buried. Don't worry. They say there's no space, but there's a lot of space. They'll find space for that. Okay, a cremation is the Hindu philosophy. And if you're a Hindu, then it's fine. We understand that's your belief. But as a Christian, you should sleep in the earth and wait for your Savior to return, to get your body. That's glorified. He needs going to change it. I remember years ago, uh, uh, exhuming the body of my brother and my mother and at that time it was before the the change of the cemetery in in Wadville. Now Wadville people were very kind to Actonville. They gave us permission to bury our dead there because the previous government wasn't interested in our problems. But at one point, it was getting very dangerous to go and visit the grave. And so what we did was, as a family, we decided to exhume the bodies of my, uh, well, rather the skeleton of my brother, Matthew, and my mother. And we took that and we buried it in Rhineswood, in the cemetery in Rhineswood. It was a very traumatic experience for me to stand there with the undertakers and see how they digging out the, up the body and taking it and placing it somewhere else. And I realized there's a link up with your body and Mother Earth. Because that night, in a deep sleep, I saw my mother sleeping. And she turned around and opened her eyes and she looked at me and I said, I had to do what I did. And then she closed her eyes and went back to sleep again. I don't understand everything. But I do know that your body belongs to the earth. Because that's where it came from. Okay. So, you need to keep that in mind. When we die and are buried, you return to the dust. All that's left there is a skeleton. Your flesh becomes dust because you were created from dust. But your skeleton is there and I believe that God will use any part to, to put you together when he needs to put you together. All right? So you need to see that. So when he says some will get up to everlasting life and some will get up to everlasting contempt or shame, how does that work? I believe that is referring to, the angel is referring to two resurrections. Everybody say two resurrections. 
one resurrection is going to take place before the millennium, which is a thousand years of Jesus Christ's reign on planet earth. And the other resurrection, the resurrection of the, of the condemned or the damned, is going to be after the thousand years of reign of Jesus Christ on planet earth. So the second re resurrection is, is basically bringing you forward to the white throne judgment. And that's where everyone that didn't know God is going to have an opportunity to answer for their lives. You must understand there are many people that didn't hear about Jesus Christ. Many people weren't given an opportunity for salvation. Those people are going to be judged by their works or what they did on planet earth. I'll show you from the scriptures now. We are not going to be judged for what we did. We're going to be judged because Jesus Christ was judged already on the cross. We're going to be receiving rewards for what we do in the kingdom of God. Do you understand that? So our salvation is paid for in full. But I want us to switch now to Revelation chapter 20. And I want you to get a better explanation here. In Revelation chapter 20. And I want you to see from verse number 4. Let's read from verse 4. And you'll get a proper description of what's happening. Now. It says here. And I saw thrones. And they that sat on them. And judgment was committed to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God. Who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads. Everybody say foreheads. And on the hand. That's what it got there. Has it got it? Okay. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Everybody say a thousand years. Say the mark of the beast is not the vaccine. I don't know why people say that the mark of the beast, but that's still coming in the tribulation. That's when the mark of the beast, Antichrist will enforce that in the tribulation times. Okay. We are now building up to the tribulation. The coronavirus will be something that is being used to put the world into a different mind frame. This lockdown and everything where you can't move freely. That's what's happening. It's setting us up for what's coming. This is not the end. Say the beginning of the end. How many years is going to take? Only God knows. Okay, now verse number 5 says, But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years was finished. Okay, this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part of the first resurrection. Say first resurrection. Can you see now? The just will be raised first. When Jesus comes, the dead in Christ will rise first. That's not referring to the Baptist markers. <laughs> the ones that are buried in the ground, they'll rise first. We love the Baptist. We that are alive will be caught up to meet them in the air. All right. Now, that's the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power. Can you see that? Verse number six. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with Him. What? For a thousand years. Everybody say a thousand years. If somebody lives to be a hundred at this time, we say, wow, God has blessed them. But there's coming a time in the near future where we are going to be with the Lord for a thousand years. One thousand years. Okay. When the thousand years expired, Satan will be released from prison. So hell is like a prison. But we made it in South Africa like a holiday home. 
so that people today in South Africa commit crimes just to go in because they can get food and they can get everything else that they need. You see how the world has gone upside down. And the people that are honest and living are struggling to make a living outside in South Africa. Can you understand why we're upside down now? Ay, ay, ay. All right. So, Satan will be released, and listen yet to verse 8, and he'll go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as a sand of the sea. So remember that during the millennium, ordinary people will be living here on earth. And they're going to have children, and they're going to multiply, and they're going to grow, and they're going to just hear of Jesus or see Him in Jerusalem. We'll be the ones that will be telling them that Jesus is our Savior. We'll tell them what Jesus has done for us. These people are ordinary people. They're going to grow up and they know that Jerusalem is where all the instruction is coming from. So when Satan is released for a short time, he tempts them, deceives them, and they go against Jesus. These people from Gog and Magog, I don't know where that is, but that's not going to be America and, and Japan. It's some, somewhere else. I don't know where it is. But God will show us. Amen. We'll see it. So there was a lot of them because it says the number is as the sand of the sea. Verse 9 says, And they went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. You know where's the beloved city? Okay, you got it. That fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now, what I'm coming to now is the second resurrection. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was no, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead. So these people were dead, small and great, standing before God. So they were resurrected. So the resurrection will happen to all people. But you'll be blessed if you resurrected before the millennium. Hallelujah. But if you're resurrected after the millennium, sorry, I warned you. Receive Jesus now. Amen. Verse number 12 says, And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were open. Can you see now? The books were open. What's his books? The books of their lives, what they did. Their works, did they do good deeds or bad deeds? Those are the books that's going to be opened at the white throne judgment. Everybody say white throne judgment. When you and I stand before the judgment seat of Christ, our judgment is basically rewards whether we obeyed Jesus or not. Amen. Verse 12 says, And I saw the dead, both small and great, standing before God, and the books were open. We read that now. And another book was open, which is the book of life. Everybody said the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things that were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades were delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to their works. Can you see that God is just? Can you see the Father is holy? He'll give everybody an opportunity to answer for their lives. Death 
and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. When you and I go through the first death, it's just a door that's taking us into the next phase. Amen. And verse 15 says, And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So my understanding of the book of life is people's lives are assessed by what they do. Those that don't know Jesus. The good deeds and the bad deeds. And so at the end of their lives, it's weighed in a scale and then it's recorded. And if they make it, where well, there's more good deeds than bad deeds, this is my assumption now. I see the names be written in the book of life. But those that are not are going to finish off in the hot place. And you don't want to be there. Some people say, well, we'll have a party in hell. It's not going to be a party. It's not going to be a party. And there's going to be different levels of suffering in hell. Not everybody's going to be the same. That's why Jesus said, it's going to be worse for those who knew the truth and turned away from it. The people that were exposed to Jesus and turned their backs on Jesus, they're going to be tormented terribly than somebody that didn't know anything. So this scripture explains to us about the resurrections and what's coming. You see, the resurrection of the blessed is where you and I are supposed to be there. Amen? And the second one is, well, they're going to have their day in court. The Father is going to judge them. The Father God is going to judge the nations of the world. You say, well, how long is that going to take? I just told you. There's not going to be any time. We're going to be in eternity. So you won't, the concept of sunrise and sunset is going to be over. It's not like 24 hours in the day and like parts of the tribulation where we had 16 hours in the day. It's going to change. It's going to change. Amen. Okay, let's go and complete the book of Daniel quickly. Daniel chapter 12 verses 3 says, Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. So when you give your hearts to Jesus, you will shine because the Spirit of God is upon you. You can see that. You see the anointing on people. Did you notice that? But in, in this, in the resurrection, you'll notice it very clear. You'll shine like the bright stars. Jesus said that in Matthew chapter 13, verses 43. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Jesus tells us in the parable of the tares and the wheat. He says, the enemy came to sow the tares amongst the wheat. Believe them, because in the end, the angels will sort it out. The good, they'll bring into the barn of the Lord, and the bad, the tares, throw into everlasting fire. So, let God do His work. Let us shine for Jesus. Remember when Moses came down from the mountain? The people asked him to put a veil over his face. Why? Because they couldn't look at him. He was in the old covenant and the glory of God was shining through his face. Because he was in the presence of God. How much more in the new covenant should the glory of God be present with us? Say, I walk with God and I talk to God. In Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4 to 7. Let's read that. Then, But you, Daniel, 
shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many will run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. Before coronavirus stopped us, we were running to and fro. Remember, you can fly anywhere in the earth. There'll be a flight somewhere. They'll take you there. But then corona stopped us. God wanted us to reset our time now. Get our priorities right. Amen. Knowledge has increased so much that we are amazed by what is capable today. Lots of you carry a smartphone and that thing is capable of carrying more information in it than what Neil Armstrong and the rest of the gang had when they landed on the moon on their computers. That's how much you got with you. If you want to know anything, just press there. Hey, Google, what's happening? And he'll tell you what you need to know. Knowledge has increased tremendously. Let's read. Verse 5, And I, Daniel, looked and saw two others, one on this river bank and the other on that river bank. So he saw two other angels. And one said to the man clothed in linen. So they're referring to them as men. Remember when they visited Abraham? They said two men came. It was angels that came there. Okay. How long shall the fulfillment of these things be? And these wonders be? And I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river. You can see now that's not an ordinary man. We held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever. This shall be a time, times, and half a time. And when the power of the holy people have been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. He's talking about the great tribulation. Time, times, and half a time, three and a half years. The power of the holy people will be shattered. In other words, after Antichrist comes and puts that abomination of desolation in the temple, that nation will be shattered because they realize they put their faith on the wrong Messiah. You see that in the end of time, we had all... This generation that's so smart, that knows everything. But we can't solve simple problems. So many simple problems are left here on the earth. And then it's like nobody's interested in getting down to the basics. We have robots now that what we call AI, artificial intelligence, that can assemble your cars. In fact, they are assembling your motor cars right now trucks and whatever they're building. We have industry that has taken on so many different functions. But we can't pro provide basic things that the people need. We're so smart that simple things is difficult. Sad, isn't it? But the Lord said knowledge will increase. People will know more and more things. That's why we need to pray and ask God to give our scientists some way to stop this virus from mutating. If they can do that, we'll deal with corona. Because the next strain is already there. You say, well, how many vaccinations am I have to take? We might have to take this annually until this thing is done. Until it's done. Like the flu shot that you're taking. That's why when I ask you to pray, you're snoring in the morning. And you, don't blame me. Okay. <laughs> 
I'm making you feel guilty. All right, let's go to verse 8 to 10. I hope you got something today. I'm going to wind this up now. 8 to 10. Although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go your way, Daniel. For the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. So you can see we're getting to the end now because now it's unsealed. We're starting to understand. If you were Daniel, you'll, still, you'll ask the Lord the same thing. If you lived in Daniel's time, remember, it was years ago. He's, in a, he's a prisoner, basically, in Babylon. He didn't see all the things that we saw. He didn't have a hindsight now to look back at history like we have today. We can put all the pieces of the puzzle together. But Daniel looked at all these things. I don't understand. And, and this, the angel says, go your way. This thing is all sealed till the time of the end. Say we are in the time of the end. So the sons of light will be wise and understand. Do you understand what's happening in the world today? Do you understand that the systems are gearing up for the Antichrist system that's coming on the earth? So don't say now, because that is the Antichrist system, I won't have nothing, I, I don't want to have nothing to do with it. No, you can't do that. If you do that, then you're going to be out of the banking system and every system that's in the world today. How are you going to buy and sell? You see, because of the internet fraud and credit card fraud, I think one of the things that will be set up is the computer chip that's going to come into place with the mark of the beast. To counterattack all the, the fraud that's going on in the world, there's millions and billions that is lost as people look up for new ways of robbing the banks. They don't go with guns there now. They sit at home and program the computers. And they call it hacking. They hack the computers. And these guys are so good, they even hack the American uh, defense computers. Now you're supposed to have all the antivirus in place there. If they can do that, what's your computer or mine? What they do is they, they, they freeze your computer. And they say, hello, sorry, you won't get no information from your computer. You've got to deposit so much into this account. Then we'll release your computer. Otherwise, you're not getting your computer back. Your computer is sitting in your office. But it can't speak to you. It's called hacking. Well, that's the times we live in today. Every time you work on the computer, put your hand on it and say, Lord, thank you, you're protecting my information. Hey, All right. Let's get a review here. Daniel chapter 12, verses 11 to 13. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away. Daily sacrifice taken away. And the abomination of desolation set up. There shall be 1,290 days. That's approximately around three years. Three and a half years. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. I think something important is going to happen at that time. It's going to end everything. That's what he's giving us a clue here. But you go your way till the end. For you shall rest. You shall what? And will arise to your inheritance at the end of days. That's the promise that the angel made to Daniel. So you're going to rest. In other words, you're going to die. You'll sleep on the earth and when you arise you'll rise to your inheritance 
got it. But before he says that, he reminds us what's going to happen in the temple in Jerusalem. He said they're going to take away the daily sacrifice. So the Jewish people, during that time, they're going to start sacrificing the animals like they were doing in the old covenant. Antichrist is going to allow that. But in the last three and a half years, he's going to come and stop them. No more sacrifices. From that time, Jesus said, those who are in Jerusalem must flee. Don't go back to your house and look for your clothes. Just run for your lives. Because when he puts his image on the altar there in the temple, then you know that everything of the Jewish people's faith will be shattered. But Messiah is coming back to restore things. And his name is Jesus the Christ. The anointed one and his anointing. Amen. And we that will be in heaven at that time with him will come back with him. Those that are on the earth will be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Are you here? We'll rise to our inheritance in the end. God is faithful. I'm saying to you, beloved, you can trust the word of God. Because heaven and earth will pass away. But his word will never ever pass away. You can put your faith on this book. And I know the world looks at it and says, this is old fashioned. But this will never change. And what God promised us must happen. All you need to do is say, Lord, I believe. Say, Lord, I believe. Say, Lord, I believe. I receive your promises that you've given me in your word. I believe I will be part of the first resurrection in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let's all stand. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Say this, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word, for your scriptures that's living and alive in my heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me, for taking my place in heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've written my name in the book of life in heaven. Thank you, Lord, that you saved me from hell. You made a place for me to be with you. Thank you, Lord, that I receive salvation in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I trust you were blessed. I trust you got something out of this. You can put your hands together for the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.